Los Angeles, the city of angels. Over the years, LA has drawn some interesting characters, those that we admired and loved by many, a place to meet new friends and discover hidden talents. Here you can shout your pride loud and clear, just like our one and only California Jane, and additionally, our hip hop moguls that paved the way for many more to come. Los Angeles is the place where our hidden talents are sculpted and developed. Maybe life can even be picture perfect with all the glitz and the glamour to the celebrity blogs and scandals. But Los Angeles, however, but Los Angeles, however, there was a vulnerability that was easily exploited. Underneath it all, hidden beneath the cameras and lights, was a wave of horrendous crimes during the early 70s, all the way up to the early 2000s. One man dead and three others wounded in South Central Los Angeles. At least 10 rounds were fired at the group from a stretch limousine. It happened just before midnight in the 200 block of West. It's not often a photographer captures a gang shoot. I'd have murdered like 50 motherfuckers in my time. Up close and in person. Because every one of them called. He was just nine years old killed in a crossfire while playing with friends in a park. As violence... I just got killed two and a half weeks ago by gang members. And my friend, she was killed. She was 14. She got her head blew off. They don't care about no girl. A girl life is mean. The curious, the potential recruits to the new gang reality of money and drugs. And along with that, new victims, new evidence that this long American shooting war is still spreading. I see it every day. It was as if a plague of serial killers had swept through the streets. In its darkest days, Los Angeles had a share of problems. With the crack epidemic, Killed the rise of gang violence, people here last year. and police, police corruption, say it's the love of while the city was still recovering from mass murders and serial murders like Charles Manson and his followers who committed the sensational La Bianca murderers. Then came Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. He was convicted of 13 horrific torture murders in Los Angeles County. These people have gained a lot of media attention and attention from the blogs and social media. It ended up making an effective cloak, allowing those to hide in plain sight. Just a few miles away in the underbelly of Los Angeles, is a place called South Central. South Central was thriving in the 80s, but if you wanted to survive, you had to learn fast. Between gang wars, riot, drugs, and police corruption, South Central was like a war zone, especially with the rise of Los Angeles gangs, dubbed as the Crips and the Bloods. Getting home can be a stressful experience for its citizens. So as you can see, Los Angeles yeah, had their work people cut have been killed in gang-related violence in the Los Angeles area. And for every death, as Bonnie Strauss reports, there are related victims. South Central Los Angeles, and it's anybody's guess who will get killed tonight. This is now a war zone where life is cheap, some say worthless. This was an invitation for criminals to take LA as their playground. They know that if they strike the right type of people, their acts of malice will go unnoticed, particularly in the poor neighborhoods of South Central. Despite urban legends that serial killers are white, the Los Angeles Police Department had one clear fact in hand. A black man or men was killing the people of South Central. Which brings us to Chester Dwayne Turner. For more than a decade, Turner escaped notice amidst the largest crime wave in Los Angeles history when the killings topped over a thousand a year. Chester was born November 5th, 1966 in Warren, Arkansas to Audrey Turner. Father name is unknown. He lived with both his parents till the age of five until both his parents separated due to his father being an abusive alcoholic. Later on, Chester's father later remarried and had three kids and passed away in 2007. In 1971, 
Audrey and Chester moved to South Central Los Angeles on Colden between Vermont and Hoover. Growing up, Chester was a lonely child. He, his mother, Audrey, worked long hours and was rarely home. He was sometimes watched over a babysitter, but not often. Mostly raised and having to survive in a tough neighborhood with no father figure. As a result, he found himself on the streets of Los Angeles. Never knowing one's journey, you either be a victim or Earlier a this month, a 19-year-old killed in a drive-by shooting was buried. He was Annie Dirk's grandson. In the past five months, she's buried two grandsons and her own teenage son, all victims of senseless gang-related shootings. Good boys who Annie says were in the wrong place at the wrong time. It's a lot of hurt and just, it's just a lot of grief. I just don't... A 13-year-old shot his father and sister killed because the boy wore the wrong color hat. A drive-by shooting in Stockton, the victim wearing the wrong color. It was noticeable early on that Chester was a very troubled kid. Even given the nickname by his classmates, Chester the Molester, as a result of his inappropriate touching of the female students. He attended Gompers Middle School and Locke High School, both centered in Los Angeles County. He was a very problematic student getting into all sorts of trouble. One of these incidents landed him in juvie for slashing someone in the stomach with a box cutter. Chester even joined a gang called the Hoover Gangster Crips. During the 1970s, they were also known as the Young Hog. The gang was founded in 1969 by 16-year-old co-founder Raymond Washington and 17-year-old Stanley Tookie Williams III. They are an active and long-standing African-American street gang founded in the western region of South Los Angeles. They originated around 52nd Street and Hoover Street between Vermont Avenue and Figueroa since the 19th. He ain't gonna stop me from cripping. <laughs> you take the job too, would you? Huh? Take Chester the job was too? given the nickname Cisco and another Tutu. He was quickly started selling drugs and began indulging as well. He was in and out of prison on various convictions, including theft, drug possession, weapons possession, assault, assault of a police officer and a police dog, two rape attempts, a violation of a restraining order, and public exposure. And in 1983, at the age of 17, he dropped out of high school. Never receiving his degree, he continued to live with his mother. During this time, he was also dating a friend named Felicia Collar. He even took on the role of stepdad to Felicia's child from a previous relationship as she was living in the home with Chester and his mother. Felicia later on moved out and Chester soon followed. In 1986, 20 year old Chester managed to get a job working at a Domino's Pizza. It was the only job he managed to get considering his background. It was supposedly he was doing well and was even training to be a manager. Soon Felicia and Chester got pregnant and had their first child of their own, a baby boy. In many people's lives, this should be a change with a new beginning. In spite of everyone's knowledge, Chester's reign of terror has only just begun. On the morning of March 9th, 1987, two passing motorists discovered the body of 21-year-old Diane Johnson in a roadway construction area west of the Harbor Freeway on South Grand Avenue. She was found partially nude. She was sexually assaulted and the cause of death strangulation. And on June 5, 1987, 11-year-old boy found a body in a trash can at the South Figueroa Corridor in Los Angeles. It was the body of 33-year-old Elandra Bunn. She was nude and had suffered two battered and bloody eyes, abrasions and lacerations on her head, legs, and chest, and bruises on her neck from being strangled. According to autopsy, Turner wrenched the victim's neck by violently shaking her head back and forth as he raped and strangled her. On October 29th, 1987, just after 1 a.m., a passing motorist discovered 26-year-old Annette Ernest. She lay face down on the roadway. She was found partially nude on the dirt shoulder at Grand Avenue on 106th Street. She was sexually assaulted with bike marks and bruises on her breast, and her cause of death 
with strangulation. And on January 20th, 1989, Southeast Patrol Officer received a radio call regarding a dead body in an alley on South Figueroa Street. Officer saw a wood panel door leaning diagonally against a detached garage behind the door Officers found the body of 31-year-old Anita Fishman. She was found partially nude, she was sexually assaulted, and her cause of death was strangulation. Eight months later, around 11 a.m., on September 23, 1989, a woman discovered the body of 27-year-old Regina Washington. She was lying on a mattress in a burnt-out garage of a vacant home on South Figueroa Street. Although she was clothed, her pants were unfastened and her shirt pulled up. A black cable was wrapped around her throat and attached to an electrical box on a nearby wall. She died of strangulation with signs of struggle. Regina Washington was a special case, double homicide. She was an expecting mother and due to the violence against her, led to the death of her unborn child due to the lack of oxygen. The baby girl's death was ruled as a homicide. In Chester's public life, after the birth of their son, his relationship with Felicia was very violent and unstable. He repeatedly assaulted Felicia in both sexual and physical ways. As a result, she had the courage to kick Chester out. Despite this, she purchased a weapon for protection. She feared that this wouldn't be the last time she saw him. She will end up using that same gun on Chester years later after an altercation where she feared for her life. She shot him three times in the chest. Till this day, she regrets not being able to have fatally shot him, for knowing later on she could have saved many lives. Chester was somewhat temporarily under the radar of detectives as a result of his antics throughout the years. In 1991, Chester was arrested for masturbating in front of a crossing guard and was charged. He was released in September of 1992 and within mere hours, he was arrested again for indecent exposure. He was then released from custody that same night. And on September 30th, 1992, three weeks later after his release, Tammy Christmas was found next to a portable classroom at Barrett Elementary School on West 98th Street. She was found partially nude, she was sexually assaulted, and her cause of death was strangulation. But somehow nobody was looking at Chester. On November 16, 1992, a custodian named David Jones at the 97th Street Elementary School, Barrett Elementary School, discovered the partially nude body of 32-year-old Deborah Williams. She was found lying next at the bottom of the steering wheel that led to the campus boiler room. She was sexually assaulted and the cause of her death was strangulation. And on December 16, 1992, at 9 a.m., an employee of the King Palace Motel on the South Figueroa Street discovered the body of 42-year-old Mary Edward. She was inside a carport off an alley that was next to the 97th Street Elementary School, again, Barrett Elementary School. She was sexually assaulted and the cause of her death was strangulation. Unfortunately, due to the ego and pride, another person would take the fall for Chester's horrendous crimes. This mistake led to the conviction of David Allen Jones, a mentally disabled part-time school janitor who was barely literate and could not even spell his own name. The same Jones who found Deborah Williams, the Los Angeles Police Department was positive that they had their killer. Jones was interrogated without an attorney. The interrogation was recorded and was used as evidence. Those same tapes, even with the obvious coercion of this mentally ill man, it was allowed by a judge to be used in court. There was no witnesses, there was no clues leading to a suspect or even DNA evidence in his case. And apparently, that was enough to convince a judge to put Jones on trial. While the police patted themselves on the back for a half-assed job well done, on April 2nd, 1993, at 9.15 a.m., a construction worker discovered the body of 29-year-old Andrea Triplett. Andrea was vanished and was last seen getting into a small brown car with a black male. She was found lying in a yard 
in the rear of a vacant building on South Figueroa Street. She was found partially nude and was sexually assaulted and her cause of death was strangulation. Andrea's mother was horrified of what happened to her daughter. She was also pregnant at the time of her death, so two burials was needed. As a result, the truth about Chester's malice deeds was revealed years later. Andrea's cousins was shocked and told Andrea's mother that Chester was at her daughter's repast. Almost speechless to hearing this news, all she could imagine was, he was in my backyard enjoying my food.